Francis. Um, Claudia Ann graduated from Binghamton in May of 2022 with her BA in Strategic, Legal, and Business Communications, a major that she created from the Clark College of Advisors um, Individualized Major Program with a minor in Africana Studies. Currently, she is a fashion publicist at La Force in New York City, where she's ex executive creative board, my bad, executive creative board partnerships and media relations strategies for the clients, including the St. Laurent Beauty and Kate Spade, as well as coordinating celebrating press tours and red carpets, media dancers, dinners, and New York fashion and fashion shows influencer collaborations, experiential activations, and more. So um, while at the university, Claudia has held many leadership roles, including president of the Student Philanthropy Committee, um, executive vice president of Women in Business, and treasurer of the Business Fashion Society, among others. In addition, she secured prestigious internships, so sorry everyone, at J.P. Morgan, the PR from um, Prosec Partners and the DC based nonprofit The Hub Project, where she wrote for the navigation search um, platform and built communication strategies for people like Taji Brown Jackson and Kamala Harris's historical and operations. Um, merging her natural love for entertainment, event production, and social impact, she produced events including Black, Black College America and Coronavirus, built her own media brand called The Mean Cut which ran from 2018 to 2021, helped support the school's biggest to-date philanthropy campaign, Accelerate, and is the on-camera talent for the university's new admissions series. So, after all of that, please join me in welcoming Claudia Princess. Good morning. Students, faculty, and staff, thank you so much for that warm and special introduction. Wow, this room is giving black and brown girl magic, and I am so here for it. I'm so grateful and so honored to be here, and welcome back to University of this Capacity. Thank you so much to Richie and everyone at the MRC for inviting me. I won't forget the first time I was on campus in 2018. Little 18-year-old me, I was doing campus tours. That day, my family decided to drive past Binghamton <laughs> seemingly by accident. No open house schedule, no tour, and my mom, little sister, and I, we walked on campus spontaneously for the first time just to check it out, and we didn't plan to that day. Perhaps just because I was wearing all green, <laughs> but that day, it just clicked. We arrived on campus, and I thought everyone was just so welcoming and, and so warm. I thought, this is my school. So fast forward four years later, being here today is really special. And I'm thrilled to be back on campus as a NAT alumna to address you all today. So since graduation, I have worked in public relations. I currently work at the PR agency La Force in New York City where a bulk of my work is doing PR for luxury clients in the fashion and lifestyle industries. So I've done anything from coordinating media interviews, press trips, New York fashion week shows, red carpets, influencer and uh, celebrity collaborations, and connecting the brands that I work with to the press and editors at top magazines like Vogue, Cosmopolitan, Harper's Bazaar, The New York Times, just to name a few, while pushing for the representation um, celebration of black journalists and creators. And I'm proud to say that the connections that and experiences that I've gained at Binghamton have helped me not only get into this space, but navigate it with a confidence and a clear vision for my career. Being in the media industry allows me to be loud with my vision and bold with my voice and give voice to the brands and people that motivate uh, and inspire us. I'm so drawn to the media, because for as long as I can remember, I've always loved to tell stories. I pieced out a little clip of Teen Vogue back when they had the print version. 
and I made picture books and short stories as small as eight years old. And when I was 16, I had this bright idea to launch a magazine, start my own. At 17, that vision became a reality. When I started the Main Cut magazine in college, the goal in mind has always been to create a space where diverse stories are told and diverse voices are celebrated. I want to talk about not just what skincare Miss Teen USA uses, but grappling also with mental health as a person of color and how to vote in the midterm elections. Provide a space where readers can, you know, learn and talk about the issues that matter in a fashion forward way. I remember my sophomore year here, I loved watching the Harper's Bazaar What's My Bag series, and I thought it'd be fun to create an original branded video series for the magazine. So I brought in a peer I thought was really cool and happening on campus. He was both a track star and an aspiring fashion stylist, and I thought, we don't see a lot of black men represented in this way. So I reserved a one hour spot in the video recording studio in Bartle, which yes, there is one. And I made my own what's in my bag slash answer fan questions under 10 seconds video. And I used the video camera and the microphones and the green screen. Well, it didn't quite go viral. Uh, I remember just how invigorating and exciting it felt to produce something of my own, you know, and showcase some of the coolest diverse students I knew on campus. But most of all, I just love doing it. No matter what industry you're drawn to, this university has so many resources if you open your eyes to see them. College is the time to really realize your passions and you truly get out of it what you put in. Now is the time to lean in and lean on focusing on finding the resources, meeting the people, um, and organizations to help you reach your goals. Well, I recently graduated in May, and I'm still very young in my career. I've learned that one of the most important aspects of being successful in business is having a strong community and network. It's about being intentional about your partnerships and connecting with individuals who support you, who see potential in you, and who hold you accountable. I'm very fortunate to have empowered, successful black women in my life who continue to inspire and motivate me and remind me that I can accomplish anything I want, regardless of my race, regardless of my gender, regardless of you know, any stereotype and attempt to dictate what I can or cannot do. So as we begin this conference, know that there is a beautiful community in this room and being here gives you a unique opportunity to build your network and gain new connections that can last a lifetime. When you look around the room at the professionals who sit near you, you'll notice that in conversation, not everyone's career paths are linear. And for me, while I've always been naturally drawn to entertainment, media, and social impact, as a few of my lifelong passions, my career journey isn't exactly linear either it did take several ebbs and turns to get to where I am today. In high school, I wanted to be either a TV host or a lawyer. Started college at Pace University. It's a really small private college right off of Wall Street where I commuted to and from for two hours every day and two hours every night. I was a poli-sci major. I loved my classes, but I felt like my major wasn't challenging me enough. And so when I transferred to Binghamton in the spring of my freshman year, decided to major in economics and minor in Africana studies. I wanted to get involved right away, which I think is really important. I became editor and secretary of the Binghamton Law Quarterly my first semester here at Binghamton, was an intern for NABA, previously known as the Burt Mitchell Minority Management Organization. And I joined Women in Business because I wanted to get involved and be a part of a club where I could network and meet other ambitious women on campus and in the workforce. What I noticed though was the lack of diversity in women in business. I wanted to see more women of color and women who looked like me in leadership. And although expected at a PWI, I remember being the only black woman there. 
and that's not that for Dave, right? <laughs> Women in Business helped me earn my first internship in sophomore year at Verizon Media, tour and meet people in various firms in New York City, and helped me gain the connections to earn a very lucrative spot in J.P. Morgan's internship class in 2021. And I honestly began to wonder, with a club that brings so many amazing opportunities, why aren't there more women of color in this space, in this circle? At the time, I think I only knew two black women in SOM, and neither of them were active members of the organization, so it dawned on me just how little of us there are in this space, and that I wanted there to be more. Being the only woman of color or the only black woman in the room is something that I know many of you can relate to. And attending a PWI, well, it comes with the territory. But it doesn't mean that your options are limited, and it does not mean that you can't do something. It simply means that sometimes you're going to have to be the first and set the trend. So while I was there, I worked my way up, starting from a member in my first year here, to vice president of professional development in my junior year, to in my last year here, I was vice president. And when I was vice president, I made recruiting a big priority, hosting events with diverse speakers a uh, necessity, and marketing to diverse communities on campus, very important. I told myself that if I'm going to be in leadership in a club where I was the only black woman when I started, I'm going to make sure that I am not the only black woman when I leave. I have had many experiences in my young life where I was the first one or the only one in the room. And it is an incredible honor and a privileged space to be in, but there comes a point in time when the work shifts from being the first one to get there to ensuring that doors are open for others as well. So that eventually we'll not only be the only woman of color in the spaces we occupy, but we'll instead feel like we feel in this room in community with each other and steeped in a glow of black and brown excellence. We get to then fully realize that there is space all of us to win. I encourage each of you now to not be shy or afraid to lead the culture. Not just in your clubs and organizations, but in your future careers. As women of color, we have so much influence in technology, music, fashion, dare I say TikTok trends, right? Everything we do, the world makes a conscious effort to emulate. So if there is a space or a room or a job or a club that interests you and you are the only woman of color there, don't be shy. Speak up. Pursue the leadership role so you can plan the campaigns, the events, the collaborations, the partnerships that you want to see. In the process, you not only find yourself in rooms you're not otherwise be in, but you allow more women of color to realize that they can do it too. And while you are, remember to always be true to yourself. While being on the Women in Business eBoard, I got very lucky and landed a spot at J.P. Morgan, which was my first fully in-person brick girl job. I was interning at J.P. Morgan in the corporate and investment banking practice. I worked in front office finance, which consists of the banking desk, sales press, sales desk, trading desk, structuring desk. I sat in structuring, which was a very technical, numbers-driven, working on billion-dollar deals. And early on in the internship, I had a call with a leader at the firm, and I remember being advised to not talk too much about the main cut or black college in America. Told that my obvious interest in media and fashion and the arts while working in finance would be looked down upon. And while I came from a good place, I spent a good deal of time having to shrink myself, hide my passions, in order to be taken seriously in the workforce. And at 20 years old, I felt like I could, ob I could obviously, you know, like them all, and I shouldn't have to pick and choose who would be where's favorite or the other. But that 
in addition to being a woman. And on top of that, being a woman of color, I had to constantly prove myself, to prove my spot. And, and knowing me, I wanted to prove any person with doubt wrong. Even though deep down, it wasn't really my truest calling, and being in that space, while a space of wealth and privilege, I knew it wasn't what I was meant to be doing my whole entire life. And through this instinctual feeling of, oh, I don't think I'm meant for this, I trusted my gut, and I learned very quickly that for me to feel good about the work that I do, I want to do work that empowers the communities that I care about, um, and allows me the space to fully be myself. I didn't like the idea of only being half of myself nearly all of the time. As women of color, in the pursuit of success, we are often either advised to or naturally feel the need to code switch, right? Or, or change who we are to make it. But we shouldn't need to. We don't have to. Yes, it's important to be professional, and there is going to be a difference between work you and hot girl summer vacation you, <laughs> but never lose yourself. Don't change who you are. Be proud of all of the you that you are, and pursue a career that resonates the most with you and your personality. Even if you have to pivot, the perk of being young is that you have the grace of time. So it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to move in another direction when you're just starting out and truthfully still figuring out what you love to do and what you're good at. So my last year here, I decided to pour into my love for media. I worked on a senior project on representation in television and the importance of weaving intersectionality and storytelling on screen. An all about voting just project, I remember doing so many interviews and coffee chats and interviews with like five, six rounds of interviews. Why do we interview so many rounds of interviews? Weird. And, but I made a conscious effort to fit them into my very busy class and mini board schedule. And it does take a lot of discipline and a lot of perseverance and honestly some rejections. But here is where community comes. It was one coffee chat, one great conversation that landed my resume into the right hands. And by April, I landed my first job right out of college in PR, working on some of the biggest Fortune 500 companies PR. In the grind, I learned that being true to yourself, in addition to being consistent and having great relationships, strong community, they're the most important things you can do as a young professional. I may work in a big city in this glamorous industry, but I grew up in a very small town in Orange County, New York. I am a first generation American. I don't have family in corporate America. Some of us in this room, like me, do not have relatives at corporate firms to hand us internships. We have to work for it. Some of us in this room are first generation, not just American, but first generation students as well. So it isn't easy. But that does not mean it's not possible. Through authenticity, a strong community, and a personal drive to succeed and do well, you can and I believe you all will go a very, very long way. So with that said, thank you so much to Binghamton and the MRC for inviting me. It is such an honor to be back and speak to you all. You all new graduating classes of smart and business-minded women of color on this campus. You inspire me and your peers more than you know. I hope you all enjoy the remainder of the conference, soak up the time, network, and have fun. Enjoy. Thank you.